Formula 5D at IBC 2015. Brought to you by B&H, the professional source for all your video needs. Blackmagic Design, revolutionary solutions for film, post-production and television. Zachtler, premium camera support. Fast, robust, reliable. G-Technology, storage solutions for any stage of your workflow. Edelkron, reinvent. Hi, Simon. Hi, Johnny. Thank how are you doing? Thank you very much for joining us uh, for this uh, quick conversation. Um, a little bit about the new products that you have, in a summary. Okay, uh, so you saw at NAB we have the new Ursa Mini camera and um, reaction to that product was amazing at, at the show in Vegas. Um, we are now starting to ship the Ursa Mini 4K model. So I know loads of people are interested to know when they're going to get this camera. We will get to this question in a second. But <laughs> that just what's new. Um, and, but since then, uh, we're coming here to IBC with something that's brand new on the Ursa Mini. So on the Ursa Mini PL, we now have um, a B4 mount adapter. Now, Which is uh, uh, almost like a broadcast standard. Yeah, for those that don't know, I mean B4 um, B4 lenses are typically used in broadcast for ENG cameras, and yeah. um, you know the benefits of those lenses um, are that they're par focal, so they, they retain the focus throughout the zoom range of the, of the lens. So very much a lens designed for live action and, and live broadcast. Okay. So this is really to move into the ENG territory? I mean, you want people or, or uh, professionals to use the camera in the ENG territory, like news and... I think we were, we were sort of really surprised by, by what the customers said, that, that people said, this is a form factor as a camera. You know, it's much lighter than the full size Ursa that, that you know, we originally um, um, started to ship. It's much lighter in weight, and we have a shoulder mount uh, kit for it. Um, it has a beautiful handle in terms of, you know, it feels great when it when it, when it's sat on the shoulder. So whilst you know, filmmakers benefit from the 15 stops of dynamic range and all of those features, all of the other camera features are really suitable to live and ENG um, type use. The one thing that was missing was that those users really wanted to use their Canon, Fujinon. Sony B4 lenses. I mean, these are expensive lenses. The lenses are 10, 15, 20,000 uh, to purchase. So once you've invested in that glass, you don't necessarily want to throw that away. You want to use it on the camera. So for us, it's really significant that for the first time in all the cameras that we've released, we now have that B4 solution. So what we've done is we've taken the Blackmagic Ursa Mini PL camera and we've made a B4 adapter for that camera. And that also gives you the lens control, it powers the lens, etc., through the adapter. The, the interesting part of that is the adapter is only 279 euros. So it's really low cost choice as to whether you want to use the camera with its PL lens mount or the B4 uh, mount on there. Does this adapter also have a built-in ND filter? Because as far as I remember, the camera doesn't have an ND filter. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, no it doesn't. Okay. Um, so this, that would be the, the 4K sensor. So, so yeah, so what we're doing right now is that the Ursa Mini 4K is about to ship. So customers are going to be getting hold of those in September. Um, people also want to know about the 4.6K. Um, which we show because that has got the, the 15 stops of range. And, and, and this people. is a little bit delayed as far as I know. It's a little bit delayed. Um, that will ship before the end of October, start to ship before the end of October on the, on the 4.6K. The good news is that in that time frame from NAB to IBC, we've done the B4, uh, you know, straight away. And we've also added to one of the things that the, the live production customers wanted was they wanted the 12G SDI input the same as we had on our studio camera. So that what happens is if you're using the camera in a live environment, then you can now get the return program feed into the camera. We can also get some camera control from our switches. You remember, I think you may be seeing this on, on some of the other uh, cameras in our range. So we've added that whilst we've been waiting on, the wait was on metal work. We were just waiting on some metal work for the camera and, and now that's out. Uh, so we'll ship the four, the 4K will go out in the next couple of weeks and the 4.6K around about the end of October. I will not go into discussion why it's late because that's real life and that's manufacturing. And obviously it was metal work. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I'm curious, if somebody purchased the 4K 
uh, sensor version. Is he able to upgrade to the 4.6 later by himself or by sending the camera to you, or that's not possible? Okay, so with it, and initially when we have the full sizer, so you remember that the message very much on that camera was that that camera is user upgradable. So the full size one is user upgradable. And you know, whether that is that you want to move from the 4K sensor to the 4.6K, you want to move that camera from EF to PL, that's an upgradable uh, sensor and turret the in the big one, in the, the big, big one. In the small one, in order to reduce the size of that as a unit, and also to reduce the cost of that as a unit, you don't have that same upgradable feature that you get on the big full-size Ursa. So you would, with that camera, choose the one that you wanted. The benefits are that we're able to bring size down and price down in that camera, but we lose the, the feature of it being user upgradable. The light sensitivity in the 4.6K um, sensor will be a bit better than the original 4K, because that was the only thing that was for me um, you know, if I'm, if I'm running or doing the documentary mm. style shooting, mm. that's that's one of the limitations. Yeah. So the, my question, if I'm a user and I have to decide between you know buying now a camera, which again uh, might have a very nice uh, image, but yeah. a bit a bit uh, that the light sensitivity is not so good. Yeah. Uh, or should I wait for the 4.6 because it might be a bit better uh, in, in low light uh, environment? It, it, it's a fair question. It is better. I mean, we, one of the benefits now of the, of the new 4.6K sensor is this is something we've been developing um, for a long time. Um, and, you know, having, we, we're still relatively new to camera manufacturing. I think it's only three years since we, since we uh, started to, to, to ship the original cinema camera. And we've done an enormous amount of learning in that period, an enormous amount of listening to customers and what they wanted. The 4.6K sensor, is, is a product of our own of our own design. We very much have worked not closely. On the shelf, not from not on the yeah, shelf. Absolutely. Uh, so the only place you'll see this sensor is in that camera. You know, it's a sensor that, that that we've collaborated on the design of very very closely in order to achieve you know the the required dynamic range from that sensor. So we're 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 getting 15 stops of range out of that. So we are truly emulating film in terms of in terms of the look and clearly you know we wanted we wanted to increase its performance uh, its light performance um, so so that sensor is something that we've we've worked on you know over a long period and and we're extremely happy with the results of it regarding the viewfinder which was introduced mm. um, with the original camera um, during NAB mm. um, many of my colleagues and friends are asking if uh, the viewfinder can be used with other cameras right and be purchased separately sure and and uh, gosh yeah i mean and and it was it's been very popular uh in so much as we've already started to ship that now so that's shipping now for existing ursa customers so the current design um the aesthetics the, the physical design is designed to fit with the ursa and the ursa mini so it fits with both of those camera bodies could it be used with another camera? There's no reason why not, but our mount and the way in which we attach that to the camera is specific to both of those Ursa models. How do you power, in, in case I, I, I uh, buy the, um, um, the viewfinder independently, in order to power it? So it's powered through, we use the, the same four pin XLR that we use to power the, the camera. And a nurse's design always had that um, four pin uh, 12 volt out on the front of the uh, of Ursa. So for us, it's very easy because we just take the power through the camera. Um, you know, in theory, of course, not all cameras have that same connection. So it may need powering from the camera battery or from, from, from another source. I'm sure that, that given the, the enormous amount of third party there would be solutions, companies that, you know, it, it amazes me actually how all of the sort of third party accessory manufacturers, they invent stuff that we couldn't dream of in terms of using different uh, cages and sliders and rigs and adapters. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if somebody didn't come up pretty quickly with a way with of a using solution. that viewfinder. Regarding the Da Vinci 12, yeah. this is now out and about. It is, full release. Yeah. Um, the strength of it, I mean, if you really have to emphasize a few, um, few points, 
if I compare it to other established uh, uh, editing softwares in the market, mm. and also where you're heading to with that software, because obviously there is should be some differentiation than the others. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think you know everybody knows of DaVinci for for color grading. You know, I think that the um, the, the roster of films that DaVinci is used on is is, is extraordinary. Um, less people know it as an editor, but I think that would change with with Resolve 12. Um, we always had some editing capability inside of Resolve, but it was really for just performing simple edits in the finishing process. And what we've now done is, is dramatically enhanced the editing capability of Resolve. A lot of people have asked, well, why is that? And, and what is the importance of that? One of the things that Resolve is, is renowned for is its ability to work with all of the different file formats and raw camera formats of all of the different camera manufacturers. So if people are using something other than a Blackmagic camera, they're using ARRI or a Sony, a Canon, and they're using you know, their log files, their raw files, they want to be able to work with them in Resolve. One of the challenges is there's not universal support for all of those file formats in the NLE applications. So you'll find that certain NLE applications support certain files, but there's no real universal acceptance of all of those different file formats. One of Resolve's benefits is, is that it does almost literally work with anything. And what we wanted people to be able to do was to, obviously once they moved into Resolve, they can stay in Resolve. So they're not having to go back if they need to change edits or if they need to perform, um, you know, other versions of that project or they want to go and cut down a, a two minute version from a long version or you know whatever. So improving the capability was was a necessity for people that had moved their projects into Resolve. Now once you've done that, we've then gone a stage further and said, well actually you can start and end in Resolve. So you can actually cut the entire project in Resolve because it will work with your media. It'll, it'll round trip if you want to, but it means that if you want to actually just start and end in Resolve, it now has a feature set that allows you to do that without feeling like you need to move back and forth between another non-linear -edit, uh, non editor. Personally, I intend to try it soon and also see if it's really worth it. Well, it's a free so download, Johnny. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's not about, you know, it's, it's not about <laughs> being free, it's about functionality. Um, and of course, if it's working with some of the uh, files that I'm used to, yep. um, I'll, I'll give it a try and see how it's working. I guess others will do it too. Um, anything else before, you know, we... Um, IBC is always busy for us, but uh, uh, yeah, it's been a good show and, and certainly a lot of, lot of interest levels around the cameras.